Welcome back. You're watching World Inside. The program is coming to you live from Beijing. I'm Tian Wei. The second China International Import Expo wrapped up in Shanghai on Sunday, marking the conclusion of one of China's biggest business events of the year. As buyers came in and out of the crowded pavilions, deals worth more than 71 billion U.S. dollars were signed this year, a sure encouragement for businesses looking to enter the Chinese market. China is the top importer for many countries' agricultural products, such as those from Argentina. So how does global uncertainty affect Argentina, and what can the country do in terms of cooperation in agricultural sector with China? Earlier, I talked to the Argentinian agriculture minister in Shanghai. Here's the conversation. <laughs> What does it mean, the China market, for agriculture in Argentina? Well, it means a lot because our economies are complementary. So we produce a lot of food. Today we are producing over 10 times what we need for our population. We produce for over 400 million people. We produce food and we are only 44 inhabitants in our country. Mm -hmm. So we can be a very good supplier of food for countries like China. Now we have seen some conflict, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it also could mean potential of opening up as big a market as China. Mm -hmm. And how eager is Argentina in this regard? Uh, we would like to, to see that all the countries can find a solution to their conflicts because the best way to do businesses is when the when, they, when, when, when you don't have conflicts. When you have win-win. Win-win situ situation, yes. multilateral commerce in based on rules. So when everybody have uh, what, what they need and everybody can get a profit with, it, with this relation in two ways. So this is the ideal, no? But I think that probably in a short time we can have a, a quiet situation and this is the uh, this is very important to develop the best uh, commercial relationship between the countries. But you know, agriculture sometimes are the f areas where in some countries protectionism could be high. Mm -hmm. How do you as the Minister of Agriculture see this, at least some political trend in certain countries? Mm. Signing agreements, <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is the best I way. That. The, best, the best way, because the other face of the coin of the protectionism is the agreement. When you sign an agreement, your people, your farmers, know very well what will happen on the future. And if you have an agreement, you have a contract, a free trade agreement, for example, you know, everyone knows how, how, uh, how to produce or what will, do you have to produce to have a future on the production. So this, uh, for us it's the best way. That's why we talk about multilateral commerce based on rules. One of the, the more strong rule is to have an agreement to, between the countries you know, to have very clear rules. WTO negotiations, for example, Mr. Minister, yes. you know that very well, that sometimes agricultural issue becomes a very core issue mm -hmm. because it could be also a domestic political issue as a result of elections and things. Mm -hmm. So how do you see when you are saying, you know, let's have agreements? Yes, From insisting. no agreement to having agreement, probably this is the most difficult well, part. Working, working. Well, look, we, I, I give you another example. We just signed an agreement with Europe, mm -hmm. between Europe and Mercosur. Well, it takes 20 years <laughs> of negotiation, but finally we, we finished all the negotiation and now we know that in, in a couple of years we will have uh, very clear rules for our can, uh, commerce between, with trade be between two, the two blocks. You know? And uh, that's why we are, we are convinced that this is the, the way. So it's about making the cake bigger. Yes, of As course, the cake bigger, the cake bigger, and, and many times together, for example, between Argentina and China, think in third markets. Yes. Join efforts to reach 
other markets. Argentina is well known for its agriculture, but on the one hand, you have great agricultural development. On the other hand, how would you look at the sustainable development mm -hmm. and protecting of the environment? We do have some lessons that we can learn in some of the recent case studies and news stories. So how do you see that combination, the right balance? Well, well for example, we, we developed 30 years ago a technique is untail system. We don't remove the soil to seed the crops. Mm. So we reduce 50% uh, the consumption of oil, for example, mm. of uh, yeah, gas oil, yes. Yeah. More than that, we are now working with gene editing mm. in, the, in the seeds. So this, with this technology, we can, we can handle the climate change mm. because we have new, new varieties uh, against the flood, against the drought, no, or the changing weather we have today. What the developing countries and emerging economies together, Argentina included in this sense, of course you have been very developed economy for quite some time, but certainly you are still a rising economy mm. in Latin America. Uh, to be able to work on multilateral platforms, mm -hmm. you know, as individual countries you have your own concerns and your advantages, but how to work together among this group? Cooperating. Cooperation, I think, is, is the word. The individualism is not the way. And it's very proof that one uh, country is isolated uh, can do nothing. So we have to w look for partners. We have to, to... The globalization is a reality. Nobody will can change that. It's, it's, we have to, to live with this. And the best way is, well, you, you, you have to do what you do best and your neighbor can supply you other things and together can supply other one. And then with this commerce, the economy improves and that helps to improve the quality of life yeah. of our people. was my conversation earlier with the Argentinian Agriculture Minister on the sideline of the China International Import Expo. Let's now co turn to Costa Rica, from where a number of food makers came to take part in this year's Import Expo with products such as coffee and others. Having signed a free trade agreement with China, Costa Rica is also one of the first Central American countries to join the Belt and Road Initiative. Earlier, I talked to Costa Rican Minister of Foreign Trade, Diela Jimenez Figueles, about the benefits of better cooperation. Take a look. Costa Rica have been working with China for quite some time. Belt and Road, uh, you're very proud about the early bird, in a way, <laughs> being exactly. an early bird. So how is it now? So we were the first country to establish diplomatic relations with China in Central America and also to have an FTA, a free trade agreement. And then we did the uh, Belt and Road Initiative as well. So we have a privileged uh, sta status and relationship with China. And what we see is all full of opportunities. Mm. But what about the Belt and Road? How from paper mm -hmm. to on the ground? Well, a lot of it is in cooperation. And so the Foreign Affairs Ministry, my colleagues, are taking care of that part of the Belt and Road. Other parts of infrastructure are also taken care of by my other colleagues in the ministry. We are very focused on the trade aspect with our FTA, and we are excited to be here. That is why this is our second year at the CIE. Mm. And of course, uh, Costa Rica regards China as an important trading partner, second largest. Indeed, it's a very important trading partner, and not only for our imports, of course, but also our exports. They have been growing 20% each year since our FTA in 2011. So it really works. It really works, and we have to make it work even more. We're getting new certification for new products, fresh products, to come into the market. Like what? Like we have a frozen fruit and dehydrated fruit and pork is a special kind of pork that is very wonderful in uh, demand in the market for it in China. Mm. Well, the bilateral trade is going on well. Multilaterally, there are a lot of challenges, as you may know, as the Minister for Trade. Mm -hmm. uh, Madam Minister, globally, uh, WTO is one of the things people talk about. 
regionally, whether there is enough efficient uh, platforms for powers in the region to work together, whether it's in Central America or mm -hmm. other parts of the world, what do you make of this current situation? I think you're right, and we cannot uh, divide multilateralism from regionalism. So uh, that is why at the CIE we had the ministerial rounds, the informal gatherings, and we are discussing where should we take uh, the WTO reforms. And in terms of regional trade and where? development, so we have to start thinking of new avenues in plurilateralism and start negotiating e-commerce and other modern and uh, from the fourth industrial revolution point of view. We cannot leave this behind. Yeah. We also have to really work on the appellate body and dispute settlement mechanism. But in terms of region and your question, I see that we are forming regional value chains and this is an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Do you see that, if I could continue a bit on the WTO discussion, mm -hmm. there could be even bigger chaos before things are settled down? Do we have to really let realities bite even bitter before we come to a path of cooperation? I would not speak of chaos, actually. I think that this is normal. We are talking about an institution whose governance was created for much smaller group of countries. And now the countries are not only more numerous, but it, the countries have changed in their development status. So it, we are accommodating uh, this new reality to an old structure yes. and we have to find ways to to agree on how to accommodate and that takes time mm -hmm. I think it is normal that you know so many members need time to establish the new ideas and the new structure mm -hmm. but you know growing pains mm -hmm. as they exactly. say it, it's really important as to who will feel the pains mm -hmm. you know multilateral framework as it works because the, it needs to provide particularly smaller quote-unquote mm -hmm. players interest otherwise big powers take all right that's yes. how it works uh, Costa Rica as a geographically relatively smaller country mm -hmm. how do you look at this so-called growing pain of the global system. Yes, I think you are right in the term growing pains and what I take is the growing part. We have been really... I love winners. it. You always <laughs> are an optimistic person, <laughs> Madam Minister. Well, you know, we, are, we have gained so much from open trade and I think trade is not only uh, just the commercial aspect, it's friendship, it's uh, bridges and cooperation. So being a small country in the last 23 years when we created our policy, we have uh, understood that we need to diversify. Yeah. And we have diversified. We have a huge and rich platform of 15 free trade agreements with more than 50 partners. So we have definitely gained. And certainty is something that we need and that now this is something that we're cherishing, but it will come to a good uh, ground, I am sure. Latin America or Central America is being regarded as so-called the backyard of a certain country. Mm -hmm. At least they want to believe mm -hmm. so. Um, so how would you be able to keep this balance in a way? Because you are having China as a very important trading partner, but certainly geographically you have another very important trading partner. Mm -hmm. You see what's happening with Canada, mm -hmm. what's happening with Mexico, uh, does it ring an alarm bell to you? Well, our advantage, uh, Tiangwei, is that we have certain characteristics that stand out. Tell me more about it. Sure, we have decarbonization plans. So any investor coming to our country that connects to our electric grid has already clean energy. And that can be part of their targets for carbon neutrality or lowering their carbon print. That is something advantageous. We also have a strategic location. We have political stability. We have no army. And we have good talent. So I think that we are only looking at the opportunities. Of course, things like Nicaragua situation and Venezuela situation have damaged us. Central America is 20% of our exports. And we must take care of the diversification. Mm. If our exporters cannot sell to Nicaragua or Venezuela, we must find other markets. So I think with China, this will really help us grow. While you are focusing on the real job, there mm -hmm. are others who try to work on the vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So how do you see this uh, really murky water right mm -hmm. now? 
I think that if you have very clear what your vision and your objectives are as a government, and our President Alvarado has that, and then you focus on that work, you must just keep going and keep pushing. And I think that is part of the long-term planning. And I want to compare uh, with President Xi's policy, for example, uh, of establishing this e import expo when the time was ripe for the country to establish it. And I think we in Costa Rica need to know when the moment is right mm. for each change. What about what's going on in the Asia Pacific region, Madam Minister? You see the RCEP, certainly yes. it's a regional uh, free trade agreement mm -hmm. uh, being signed recently between ASEAN members and some of the major economies, Japan, mm -hmm. South Korea, China, mm -hmm. Australia, New Zealand, just to name a few. So will this be a trend that you would watching from afar about Asia Pacific, which is one of the rising regions yes. certainly in the world about trade? Certainly. I think uh, on the one hand, I think it's very positive for the trading system because it is a trust and confidence in trade agreements yes. and in regional partnerships. Of course, India will have open doors and maybe in the future they will join, but I think this is very important. And in Asia Pacific, I see this wonderful trend of the regional global, uh, the regional value chains that are being formed mm. and I think it's very important to understand where the trends are moving and we in Costa Rica need to understand that as well. Mm. But you know, Madam Minister, there are so many uncertainties mm -hmm. these days. Mm -hmm. uh, you are dealing with trade but you are talking also constantly to businesses coming from your country. Mm -hmm. So how would you communicate them about the uncertainties as they are in business environment? And where is the stabilizing factor? I think the stabilizing factor a lot is in policy making and government. Because or governance. And governance. And I think that we in Costa Rica are doing one of the things that are, is very positive is we are in the process of becoming an OECD member mm. in the Organization for Economic and Cooperation Development because that means that we will understand how to b better govern ourselves and become a more fact-driven fact in policy making and that creates a lot of certainty and assurance mm. not only for trade but for social well-being so this balance is very important. Mm. We see China at the opening ceremony of the CIE for mm -hmm. example the government is trying to announce once again more opening up policies and mm -hmm. determination about that protection intellectual property rights and things like that so how do you see an economy like China, you know, from your own perspective, not just about bilateral, but mm -hmm. rather China as a concept and China as a phenomenon. I think China is a, a wonderful phenomenon of, of an orderly evolution of how a country can plan and has a vision and take that vision into action in very careful steps and how a government builds a narrative that is understood by the people. So I think it's a good example for other countries such as Costa Rica, how to set ourselves goals, long-term and middle-term goals, and explain them in order for everyone to join in those efforts. Trade and governance, those issues are really interconnected. And that is all the time we have for today. If you'd like to see more, try to find us World Inside CGTN into your search engine. Check out our YouTube channel as well. Also, you can follow us on Twitter, Facebook. From me, Tian Wei, and everyone on the World Inside team, thanks for watching. Tune in again next time for more insights across China and around the world.